and so I can lay out each leg of my journey and typically what I do is I just say here's my starting location here's my ending location and then I go through and start filling things out Hi everyone, welcome to Tigner Adventures. My name is David and my wife Ninette and our little cat Tansy here. We uh, live in our motorhome full time and we travel all over the place. And in doing so we have to plan out our trips and things like that and so I thought it would be a good idea to maybe show you guys how we plan out our trips that we take and the places that we stay and how we find out our gas prices, maybe some of the apps that we use. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by using, showing you the apps that we use on our phone and then I'm going to show you on our, web, on our uh, laptop the programs that we use there to map out where we go and how we take care of our whole trip. And hopefully that will be of interest to you and help you in uh, you know, getting things planned out for yourself. Now this is just one view, there's lots of ways of doing things. And some of you may have certain apps or phone or um, sorry things on the internet that you like better than what I'm using, and that's great. Uh, just make comments below because I'm always interested in learning about new things, and it's always uh, fun to check out and find things you know share information between us all. So, but one thing I do want to uh, let you know ahead of time is you can become what they call app poor. That means like my first year out. I bought everything I seen. I just went out onto the app store for example and out on the internet I just top, typed in RV planning and I started buying stuff and I started using it and I come to find out you know there was a lot of those things that I didn't use and so what I'm going to show you here are the things that I've settled down on I've uh, and I just the things I'm using myself the apps that I use on my phone and the stuff that we use on the internet so I've narrowed that down quite a bit to save a little bit of money because most of these are subscription based. So you pay an annual fee to use them, which is fine if you're going to be using them. So let me show you the apps that I use on my phone the most first, and then I'm going to go through the get on the actual computer and then we'll show you how I actually map that out. Basically, um, the ones that I use the most out of all these is this coverage, public lands, state lands and gas buddy so out of this list right here those are the ones I use the most so the coverage app allows you to bring this screen up that shows you um, what your cell service is and you can top right here we can select what carrier we have and on the bottom we can select the type of service that we're looking for even up into 5G public lands um, this is a screen of the listing that it shows and you can see that on this screen that you have um, the brown is BLM land, the green is US Forest Service. So just on this little list alone with this uh, public lands app, you can see that the majority of the public lands is on the west side of the United States. The state lines app is really nice because what it does is it breaks it out and shows you based on the state that you're in, you know all a bunch of different things you know like if stoplight if you can stop there turn make a right turn uh, it tells you if the uh, rest areas allow you to park there or how long you can park there in a rest area maximum speed limits based on what you're uh, whether you're towing or not so that's a very helpful app gas buddy uh, this is what the screen looks like there it shows me all the gas stations in the area but I can expand this map out and I can search any place in the United States and so I can see how much gas is um, for example before I enter California because they're probably the most expensive um, state for gas and then I can see um, how much gas is in California on the route that I'm going to go and also how much gas is in this case um, you know on the other side when I get through California if I'm going into another state and so then I can kind of base on that, you know, like if I'm going to be 20 miles from the, the border, then gas is going to be a dollar cheaper, then I may want to say, oh, okay, I only want to put in, you know, so many gallons just to get me there instead of filling up my whole 75-gallon uh, tank. So uh, things like that are nice to know, and GasBuddy actually shows me that.
Okay, that's a quick review of the apps that I use on my phone. Now we're going to move over to the computer. And there's one main uh, site that I use on the computer. I'm going to go into a number of them here. But the one that I actually use for laying out the trip is called RV Trip Wizard. There's a number of different apps out there that, uh, or sites that say they do that. For example, Road Trippers um, does it. Uh, a number of others. Uh, Road Trippers is more geared towards cars. And so I found that when trying to use that, um, the problem I had was it was trying to take me places that weren't um, easy to get to as far as with an RV. Some of them were even down dirt roads. And it was just like, this just doesn't work as far as an RV is concerned. So, so if you look here, um, RV Trip Wizard, if you go here, you can uh, actually take a tour um, of the software, see if you actually like it or whatever. There is, it is a fee-based service, so it's a membership service that you have to keep paying for all the time. And there's good things and there's bad things. There's not any one software or application that does everything, unfortunately. I've logged in. Um, now and I'm going to go ahead and um, open up this one trip that I've already started working on. You can see I've got it listed here. Uh, it's got 28 stops so far to find and so far I'm staying 59 nights. So I'm just going to open this up and this loads all the settings that are based on you know my vehicle, things like that and it loads up all my uh, points, stopping points that I've uh, defined so far. So on the right side here, you can see on this big map, you can see the map itself and a route. Um, so very easy to see graphically where I'm going and where all my different stops are. Um, on my left, I have all the stops defined. Initially, when I start out, all I put in there is I say, okay, I'm gonna start here and I'm gonna end here. And then I go back and I start uh, breaking out um, where I'm going to stop, where I'm going to get gas, and so forth. So to start with here, let's go ahead and I'm just going to zoom in down here at the bottom uh, starting area. And over here on the left, you'll see a list. And the first item on the list is uh, this uh, Sundance RV Resort where I'm staying. And you'll see over on the map that when I have that highlighted on the left, it starts blinking on the map. And if I go down to the next entry, which is pilot, that starts blinking and it actually highlights the route from, in this case, Yuma to Quartzsite. And if I look on the left here, it tells me that it's 77 miles and it's gonna take me an hour and 20 minutes to get there. Now it's calculating that hour and 20 minutes based on me saying that I travel average travel is 55 miles per hour so I may drive faster but if I have stops in there and things like that you know to get gas whatever my average per hour as I drive along during the day is about 55 miles per hour and you can set that to whatever you want and based on that and based on what gas price I said in the, is my default gas price it's saying that I am um, gonna that's gonna cost me $45 to get there so that's just kind of an estimate you can change those to your rig you can change them however you want and it's gonna you know it's fully customizable so as I keep going down like I go flying J it's the next entry over uh, just before I go into California it's highlighting that one and now I'm going into California because we're heading off to Joshua Tree you can see how that highlights that one so so then the big question comes down to how am I figuring out where all these different stops are? Okay, I've already talked about um, the Gas Buddy app um, that I use on the phone and, and I can look at things up on the web, but it's much easier to use that app on the phone. So I've already got that defined. I already told you about that. But the next thing that uh, options that I have is where am I going to stay? Okay, we typically want to travel uh, more than no more than about three to four hours in a day so if you look right here Joshua Tree is roughly about three hours uh, pretty close to three hours from Yuma so we're gonna look to say somewhere around Joshua Tree now we normally don't stay at RV parks if I go up here to the top right of RV Trip Wizard there is a camping thing here and if I click on that it'll show 
all these parks that are everywhere. It's more geared towards, hey, we want you to stay at some RV park. Well, I don't like staying in RV parks typically. So what we want to do is stay where it's free. So since, especially since we're out west, we have a lot of free camping, that's where we want to stay. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this off. And I'm going to go up to some of these tabs and I'm going to show you some other options that we have for picking out places that we're going to actually stay and then we'll come back to RV Trip Wizard. So the first one we're going to start with is um, Boondockers Welcome. I've put in Portland, Oregon that I'm looking for some place to stay around Portland. You can choose anywhere you want around the United States. I'm just using this as a little demo. Um, and based on that I can go select on entry. So I'm going to come down here and I could select um, this entry here which is 5H Ranch and it's in Pendleton, Oregon and I can click on that and it's going to actually take me up to my next tab here so I'm going to come over here and so this 5H Ranch um, allows has space for two rigs of any size and you can stay four nights maximum if you wanted to stay in this particular area so that's an option. I could also do this for down in uh, California Joshua Tree, but this is just a, a service. Basically what Boondockers Welcome is, is somebody says, you know what, I have space next to my barn in this particular case that someone could park their rig. We don't offer typically any services, but if you look down through here, um, this one actually, they do have a 15 amp electric service available. Um, they aren't requiring any money. They're saying they don't require donations. Uh, but normally when I use anybody park anywhere, we call that uh, mooch docking. Um, normally we don't, we're fully self-contained, so we don't, uh, we have solar and everything and we don't normally plug into anything um, at the guests that we're staying at, if we can avoid that. So, but you know, this just gives you that option. Um, the next one over is Harvest Host. Harvest Host is a service it's another membership based service i only pay for a few different services but i do pay for these particular ones and basically what this is showing is up in the portland area just kind of pick that because it's all the same and it's showing wineries or um, you know sometimes there's museums golf courses places that you can stay and they'll usually let you stay one night and the reason they're opening this up is for advertising purposes so they really want you to come in and spend some money and you're saving money from staying in an RV park so why not spend it here but they're pretty cool places um, so anyway this is an option and there's not a lot of them everywhere especially we try to do the backcountry a lot and so a lot of times there's not one that's close to us uh, the next one over and this one we probably use the most out of all of them and that is um, Campinium. Uh, you can donate to them. It's like 20 bucks a year, uh, but it's ran by the people basically. So if you find a place that you really like, you can take some pictures, enter the GPS coordinates in there and send it to them and they'll put it out there for everybody to find. Okay, so it works out really nice. And, and so that's one of the things I really like about it. Um, it uh, because it's always changing. So if I actually go out here and I look for um, for example, when we get to the end of the trip, we'll add in something for Craters of the Moon. So I'm just going to type in here, Craters of the Moon. And typing that in, it does do a search. I can't just hit enter here. I have to wait for it to do the search and then select what I actually want to go to. So we're going to actually go to Craters of the Moon National Monument in Idaho. Uh, we're going to add that to our trip so you can see how we add entries. So I'm just going to click on that and so that brings me up to craters of the moon and over here i have the big graphical thing and the place i'm gonna i want to go to is this um fish creek reservoir so i kind of looked this up ahead of time so if you think i know all this ahead of time i don't i just was doing a little bit of research here it is blm so it is free and my next tab over i've actually normally you would click right here and it takes you to this tab it actually talks about it and it shows you, you know, pictures of it, tells you a little bit about it, but it mainly gives you the GPS um, uh, of where that location is. So that's what we're going to use to actually add this into RV Trip Wizard, um, mainly because RV Trip Wizard, again, is geared towards RV Park. So that's what typically it's showing, but I can 
add a lot of these uh, free spots in there and stay at those so that's kind of nice about that setup so it here the last price paid was zero and in the longest unit in here was 19 feet but you can see by the pictures that it's pretty wide open so I don't think that's going to be too much of an issue you can also look uh, you want to look and see what the star ratings are and if there's any reviews things like that because sometimes you'll go um, to a site and it'll be really I mean yeah it might be free but it's really crappy and not very safe you probably don't want to stay there it doesn't have good cell service whatever the case may be so if you look at those reviews ahead of time with this then it kind of gives you a pretty accurate idea about the site itself so you want to make sure that you find a few different places look at all the different reviews and then you can scout ahead just before you're going to drive into those just to make sure that they're going to be the place that you want so the next one over from there is called Free Roam, freeroam.app, and it shows you a lot of camping places also, so you can kind of get an idea of those particular camp places. Um, the next one we go to, if we have to stay at RV parks, and we typically run or look at Passport America. In this particular case, I'm sitting over here by in California. I've selected CSET Harbor RV Park, and, and so I've clicked on that. And then when I go to my next tab over here, it actually brings the park up. So it shows you here that I only have to pay 50%. So they normally charge $35 a night, but if I'm a member of Passport America, then I get it for $17.50. So if I've got to go stay somewhere, it's nice to only have to pay half price. And I've got some pictures here. I've got a list of amenities. One of the things I want to point out here are some important campground notes. This is where you, it is the gotcha sometimes so PA discount is valid for one night on a space availability basis meaning if they don't have enough room for you you're not going to get in anyway uh, regular fee applies after the first night and the PA discount is not valid from May 15th through August 1st so the amount of time that you want to go there which is normally the summer months you cannot use PA you know um, Passport America so that's really there's a bunch of them like that. They have some restrictions, so it's not all perfect um, because in this case, these guys have a bunch of restrictions that make it so that you uh, can't use it. Um, one thing over here it does state is credit cards are accepted. A lot of times it'll say cash only, so you just need to be aware of that too. In this case, pets are welcome. Sometimes they're not. So another thing that we do is uh, when we're trying to figure out things based on the areas we're going to, we'll go to the internet and we'll actually search. In this case, I'm saying Quirky, Arizona. So I'm looking up Quirky, Arizona. It's coming up with a bunch of different things. Um, the first portion here, you know, like the weirdest places in Arizona, you know, so you can click on that and get a list of all these interesting places. And that's how we find out places that we actually want to go to while we're in that particular location that we're staying at or we want to stay at. And so just Quirky, Arizona, Quirky, Utah, um, if you want to break that down a little closer, you, you can just say Quirky Yuma. Um, and so it gives you this list and you can just look up all these different places and then you can add those into your RV trip wizard. Another one I mentioned Road Trippers has, has a free version portion of it. You don't have to pay for the pro and it will show you a lot of different places that, uh, you know, give you some ideas also. So a lot of these different applications that you can find on the internet or on your phone, a lot of times they'll have a free version of it and they'll just give you glimpses of certain things and then you can use that to uh, find out more information and decide if that's what you want to do. Uh, but with that said, let's go ahead and jump back into RV Trip Wizard. And I want to just kind of finish this off by doing a couple little um, extra things here to show you some other powerful things why I like this compared to others. And that is we right now have our trip planned. Our last destination is up in Washington. So if I look over here on the left side, scroll down, I'm going to go some, to some friends that are in uh, out on Long Beach Peninsula. And now we want to travel from there on down. I mentioned, you know, um, Craters of the Moon. So remember I copied the GPS coordinates from what I found on Campinium out by Craters of the Moon. So now I want to go ahead and add that into my RV trip wizard. And so this is how easy it is. I just come up here, I paste that GPS coordinates in there. Um, it automatically comes up with where it is, but I can just hit enter here 
and it brings up this destination here. So I can either select the one that they had or just use my actual GPS coordinates. And, and when I say more details, what I usually do is I put the GPS coordinates into the comments so that I remember how to get there because a lot of the boondocking areas they don't reference. In this case, it looks like they are coming up with that one uh, because it is actually a BLM type campground. So, but I'll put this in there and then I go up to the top up here and I'll put in, you know, actually what it is that I'm going to. So we are adding fish. Creek oops, Reservoir, and I could put nights in here if I knew how many nights I was going to stay, but at this point I'm just going to say save this custom spot. Now <clears throat> if I expand out my map here you can see it's added that and it's, and I'm going to move this over so we can see the whole route. And there it is, going from Washington to Craters of the Moon. And you'll notice along this route, I have a couple red triangles. And what these are, they have gas pumps in them. This is actually showing me um, that I'm going to be out of gas when I get to this point. This is based on um, how much gas I hold in my tank, how much gas, you know, um, miles per gallon that I get. Um, in my case, I've put in that I usually get about 5.5 miles a gallon. Now, that's the conservative side. Because I don't want to run out of gas so I've got 5.5 gallons and then my tank is 75 gallons and I have a reserve of 25 gallons so if I look at the map here you see that here is the Dalles that's a big city that's in Oregon compared to anything out here so I'm gonna go ahead and, exp and go in here zoom in and the thing that I'm looking for um, when I uh, come down to these locations is where I can get in and out easily and get the best gas price So I go back to my gas buddy app that I showed earlier and I look up all the gas prices in this particular area and what I found for now is that um, The Dalles is a bigger city, but Biggs right here right here in the center of the map actually has a truck stop. It's got a pilot truck stop and that if you're a big uh, good Sam member, then you get five cents off per gallon at uh, Pilot and Flying J. So the gas prices in Bigs is actually cheaper than the Dow's, and it's just an exit, uh, so easy on, easy off at a truck stop. So that's nice in that sense. I don't have to drive around downtown Dow's trying to find uh, cheap gas. So what I'm going to do is go up here and I'm going to add in the address for the pilot station. So 9145 and see it just starts filling that stuff in so um, and this is uh, Biggs. So you see here it found that particular entry and so I'm just going to highlight that one and say add that. So it comes down here and I'm going to say more detail and I'm going to put that address. I'm going to highlight this and copy it. And again, I'm just going to put that in my comments. And I'm also going to put in here the price per gallon of gas at this location. That way I know where it's at and I can check gas prices later because by the time I take this trip, most likely the gas prices will change. And so I want to kind of keep track of that a little bit. So. Um, then I'm going to put the name of the um, gas station up here, so in this case it's Pilot. And I, I'm not staying any nights, I'm just going to save this custom stop. okay? And then once that's done, I'm going to go over here to the left, zoom down to the bottom here, and I see... Uh, so that's kind of weird. Oh, see, I, I added it here, it's going to take me seven hours from this one location and it's like wait a minute I'm going 12 hours here and then seven hours back basically because I put it in the wrong place so I want to actually over on the left here I can actually highlight it or click on this spot here and move it up in line where it's at and then that way um, it only shows it's going to take four hours and 34 minutes to get here it's 230 miles from my last destination destination 
So now that I've got my pilot listed in here, I want to go into this edit option. And you'll notice over here on the right column, I've got the rival fuel. So I reached this gas station with 26.32 gallons estimated to be left in my tank. And remember, that's based on me getting 5.5 miles a gallon. And usually I get closer to six or a little over, so I may physically have more, but this is better safe than sorry. And so I've got that much there. Um, I can add fuel here and then it will change my departure fuel. Now, I set up in the system that I can only hold 75 gallons. So one of the nice things I like about this is if I do click here and I add more than I can, instead of trying to figure out the decimals and everything, I just add more than I can. When I hit tab here, it automatically adjusts it and changes my departure fuel to 75 gallons. So when I save, then all of a sudden, if I zoom out, you'll notice that my gas can that was there is gone and it's now moved down here into um, really close to Idaho. So I've added that. It's going to take that much longer for me to get gas to here. So now I can say, okay, let's go ahead and do the same thing. We can add another stop in and uh, put it, you know, just keep on going. So um, that's how we deal with the gas. That's one of the things I really like about this. I can figure out things ahead of time instead of trying to just be driving along and, and uh, find out that I'm just about out of gas and, and start worrying about where I'm going to get it, I can plot that out ahead of time. Okay, I've jumped ahead here and I've gone ahead and added in uh, the rest of my gas stops. And then I went through and researched out some of the places I wanted to stay. And then my last entry I put in kind of messed things up a little bit. So I just wanted to kind of point this out a little bit. Starting off here in Washington, as I'm highlighting these, they're jumping up and down on the map so I can kind of follow along and see where it's going. Um, I'm gonna go to a Harvest Host location here um, to pilot to get some gas. And then I'm gonna go to a Boondockers Welcome here and a Boondockers Welcome here. And between these two, I only put in one night because they're not very far apart. And I don't know, between Harvest Host and Boondockers, you have to send in messages to um, you know reserve a spot. So. I don't know if I'll, which one of these I'm going to get if I get it at all, so I'm just putting in some extra options here. But those are working fine. I'm just going on down the highway here, and then I'm going down past the Love's gas station to this location, and then I'm going back up to Love's. So this one got out of whack here, so really what I need to do is I need to go over here on the left. You can see where I've got this one highlighted that's in the wrong place and I want to actually move this past. So I'm just gonna drag this down past Loves. And there we go. And now we're down past Loves. So now it's all back to normal. The gas pumps are all gone. I don't have any, I'm not gonna run out of gas before I get to my final location. So another uh, feature I'd like to mention, because this is where I've ran into issues with other types of mapping software. So if you look over here on the left-hand side, I'm staying in Cove, Oregon for one night and then on the 18th of June and then the next day I'll be going to Love's and down to this other boondockers welcome and if I decide okay you know what I want to stay more than one night this guy allows us to stay for four nights so I'm just going to modify this so that I can stay for the full nights so I'm just going to edit it make this uh, change up here to say four save it and then you'll notice over here on the left that this site now I'm staying here for four nights it has automatically updated the dates for these next entries so now I'm from the 19th I'm now to the 22nd so triplet RV trip wizard is keeping track of that and automatically updates things accordingly and so that's one of the really nice features some other ones that I've had is if you modify one entry then you've got to go back and change every entry after that and and so that's one nice feature about this software. So remember I mentioned that there are things that don't work. So not everything is great with this. These guys are trying to uh, do everything and they do a lot of things pretty good. But one thing they don't do very good right now is um, dealing with elevation. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to zoom into this Portland area 
and just kind of point out my route here. You'll notice that um, right now I'm routed over here onto Highway 26, so I go past Seaside here and then across this highway. But if I zoom in here enough, you'll see there's a lot of curves here, so something's going on there. And my guess is that it's gonna be going up quite a bit in elevation. So down here on the bottom, I can click on this elevation um, tab. This actually shows me my elevation. And as I move along, if I get down towards the end of my trip here, you can see as I move across the bottom, then up here on the map, a little round zero is following my location as I drive right there. So you can see that from this spot right here, I'm at 13 feet and once I get to this point I'm at 1565 feet so I'm doing about a 1500 foot climb going up this mountain it doesn't tell me you know what my elevation is so what they did is they came up with this idea okay well that's it's showing me this along the bottom but if I click over here on this show radiant then it wants me to think that out of this whole trip that I'm doing throughout from the south all the way through Utah back to the coast you can see how it's going up and down but it's showing me that according to their little chart here this one little section right here is about a 4% grade and all the rest of them are around 2% maybe a 3 here and there and so this this portion of the uh, software is is so messed up that that has caused me some issues in the past uh, because I was relying on this and after I've talked to them several times and sent them a number of examples then they came back and says they admitted that this isn't working the way it's supposed to and that it's really basing it on an average throughout the whole trip which is absolutely useless so this leads me to the next thing I wanted to talk about a little tidbit here is that when you're planning your trip it's important to know what the elevations are that you're going to have to climb up and down and so because of that you want to have some way of determining that and because RV Trip Wizard does not do that at this point I found this other little setup so this one here it's called Mountain Directory and if you just look down through here, you know, it uh, starts talking about it and everything. It's mainly for truckers, but it's very, very helpful for RVers too. So, and it talks about, you know, different road hazards that you have. You can get down through here, and the nice thing is you can order an ebook of this for $25, so which includes you can get both coasts, east and west coast, or you can just do like the west coast only for like $15. But I just ordered both of them. So if you look here now, this is running the software. This is the ebook they sent me. This is what it looks like when it first comes up. And so I've got the, the heading here. I can click on table of contents. Over here on the left side now, I've got my mountain directories. And because I bought both, I've got the west coast and east coast. So in my particular case, I was talking about that little area above Oregon. I can click on Oregon. And the road that it was routing me through was this little route right here, which is Highway 26, okay? And you'll notice here that there's a little warning. It's got a yellow um, diamond sign here. It's a little warning. The other route is over here through Astoria. There's no warnings on this side at all, okay? So it just kind of depends on, you know, what the warnings are and whether I want to go this route or not because the one through Astoria is a lot longer of a drive so but if I click here it takes me down to number 53 here and it says this is between Portland and Seattle so if you're going that direction there is a two mile six percent eastbound descent into Portland on US 26 it is a very busy highway four lanes in this area and there is a tunnel near the bottom of the hill you know if you're carrying hazardous material which doesn't necessarily pertain to us so but there are several other climbs and descents of you know along this whole road and the worst there they are is six percent up to maybe two miles so nothing really major uh, the time it really gets to be a real hassle um, at six percent if you know if it's a real long six eight mile drive then that starts to get to be a long haul but usually our rig can handle a mile or so without too much of an issue. 
and we do slow down because we're towing but we may look at this and say you know what that's a long drag and maybe we better disconnect our toad before we make that climb just to make it a little bit easier on the motorhome uh, help save our gas mileage on the motorhome because uh, our toad gets a lot better gas mileage anyway but it just takes off you know 5,000 pounds that the uh, motorhome isn't carrying up that mountain so those are decisions that you can make so um, then let me go back to the table of contents you can see oh let's sorry let's go back to Oregon again okay let's go back to the map and you can see that throughout all of Oregon here I've got a lot of diamonds all over the place and so that's what's cool about this particular app um, it just goes through and highlights all those different areas so based on where you're driving you may decide oh that's I need to know these things ahead of time so if you look for example over here here's Pendleton we're going up I-80 here or I-84 and there is you know some diamonds here so let's look at number 24 here but this is a really bad grade oh wow there's not a lot of information here so um, what it's saying here is it's got this all highlighted here so if I click on this it's actually breaking it out quite a bit so it's going into really great detail and it's telling you that the, you got this six percent grade um, so five to six uh, percent 40 miles 45 mile an hour curves uh, it's just giving you the whole breakdown so that you can decide you know what that's a long drive and I may not want to be towing my toad that whole way um, so that's that's just a really cool this is just a really cool app and you know for $25 it's well worth the, the money on RV Trip Wizard when it routes you somewhere you do have the ability to change it so if you notice here um, I said you know it routed us through this mountainous area and we don't want to go through there after we looked at our maps we decided you know we don't want to deal with the the, um, the climb that's required there and there's a much better route just north of here which is right up here so on the left over here on the top I have this option that says drag route and I can click on drag route and then come down here and you'll notice that it puts a little um, zero kind of thing a little dot there on the map that allows me to um, right click on that uh, line there and I'm saying okay I'm going to move this up north here and this is where I want to be so I'm just going to put that up there let go and it automatically modified the route accordingly okay and it may be a little bit longer but what it's done is it's gone through and updated all my time frames throughout on the left there so automatically so it makes it really easy to move things back and forth based on what, how we want to go and so you can see that RV Trip Wizard has a lot of cool little um, options to it make your life planning um, a lot lot easier so that's why I like it um, I'm going to now that the trips planned I, I just want to touch on two other apps that I use quite a bit so I brought up these apps again and this is when I'm getting ready to leave these are the apps that I use to actually um, navigate my trip and those are highway weather and RV life when you log into highway weather uh, what it does is you specify what uh, your starting location is and what your ending location is and so in this particular case I'm just gonna use an example here St. George to Salt Lake City Utah and if you notice to the right here of Salt Lake City it has a magnifying glass I'm gonna click on that magnifying glass which starts the searching process and it goes through and figures out the route that uh, it has available to get to that destination it has two different routes here and so you can choose which different route you want to go on or whatever it picks picks the best one it uh, thinks that you're going to use in this case this is I-80 which is freeway that's the route we're going to go so at the bottom here we have plan ahead so we click on plan ahead and that brings up this little screen that says the best time to leave now would be now and this is some of the information about your trip what I do is I click on this little X in the top right corner there and it brings up this listing here of each stop or you know each little city along the way and you'll notice here that as I look down through here that I've got quite a bit of wind and so that's one thing I don't um, like to drive in if I can get away with it um, is, is high winds and so uh, for example here in Meadow Utah we love stopping there and uh, visiting the hot tub there we did a video a few weeks ago on that 
um, it's going to be almost 30 miles an hour wind. And so, you know, that's not very fun to be out in, let alone driving in it. So if I go down here at the bottom of the screen, um, I've got, um, it shows the time that it is right now but I can move that over and I can start moving over to different days of the week and by doing that then you can see that the weather conditions change in those different locations so right now you know I just kinda of go back and forth I try to find the best day that um, I can leave for the uh, best conditions and that can be in this case I'm talking about wind but that could be whether there's snow there's lots of rain uh, whatever that may be, um, I can kind of try to figure out the best for the overall trip, okay? And that's the, the real strong point of this particular app. Now, this app, when you sign up for it, the first week is free, and then after that, it's uh, $2.99 a month, so $2.99 a month. You don't have to keep it going continuously. It does allow you to uh, cancel it when you're not going to use it. So we've been, for example, we've been down in Yuma, Arizona doing a work camp job for the winter, and it went for four months. So there's no reason to pay the $3 a month you know, for the four months. Uh, we just stopped the billing and then when we get ready to go again then we start the billing back up again and what I was planning in RV Trip Wizard those dates I showed you how that kind of changed you know you could change certain things well I can change my starting date and it recalculates the whole trip without any effort and so I can figure out the best day to leave uh, for the different areas I'm going to and then also if I get somewhere and then I pull that up and I notice oh wow tomorrow now for our next leg it's gonna be like this maybe I want to hang around this lo this location a little bit longer or maybe I'm gonna cut the trip short a little bit because of the different weather conditions so so this app works very very nice and it's a really good one to have so again highway weather and then the last app that we're going to talk about um, actually ties into RV Trip Wizard. It's the same company that makes RV Trip Wizard, makes RV Life. So I'm going to bring up RV Life. And when you do, for the first time, it's going to ask you a lot of things about your rig. So you just fill that information in, and then uh, it will ask you to log in. And what you're going to do is you're going to just use the login that you have with your RV Trip Wizard. And by doing that, then it links your RV Trip Wizard to this application and you'll notice here that when I log in it brings up my trip so here's my trip that I had pl planned within um, RV Trip Wizard and so then what I do is I just click on that trip and what that does then is loads up those stops that I had defined in RV Trip Wizard are now listed here on the screen so remember in RV Trip Wizard on the left hand side I had um, these stops all listed okay and then when I bring up this app now with that in there it shows all those items listed there just matching exactly what I have in RV Trip Wizard so that's the the good part of this app and so you'll notice like we were talking pilot before so I'm gonna drive from Sundance RV Resort up to pilot I can just push on the right um, arrow that's over to the right side of you know from pilot and it will route me um, up to my location. Route recalculation. After half a mile, turn right. Um, it does the calculations and things just like any other GPS software. And so at that point, um, it's no different. Um, but the the selling point to this, with as long as with RV Trip Wizard, is that it's utilizing the information that's in RV Trip Wizard and just pulling it up here automatically, so you don't have to re-enter it and everything this app does not cost any money it's it's uh, included with the RV uh, trip wizard uh, payment that you paid for that particular software uh, now a downside to this app is it does get confused as to where you're at it'll think that you're on the frontage road for example and then it will say make a turn up here to get back onto the freeway or something like that I've sent some examples to them um, they are working on uh, making changes to that to make it work better and I think you know I'm not going back to the same location so they may have fixed those specific spots and I just come up with some others so each time that happens I get with them and you know I may complain about RV Trip Wizard and RV Life and the things that they're doing that don't work because they're trying to do too many things but you know they are at least trying and I have to tell you that the customer service with them is just outstanding 
they they are very quick to get back with me and I send them examples and things and they're very uh, polite they get back with me and they say that uh, they'll forward those on to the development team to to review and things so it's it's very nice to have them um, working you know with the community to, to make the software better and I think overall eventually it'll get uh, exactly where we need it to be it's very usable the way it is the way I work with this um, is I actually bring this up on my phone when I'm um, leaving I put uh, an earbud in my left ear uh, so I can also hear my wife on my right side still because uh, that can be very helpful uh, she has to help me drive too so it's good to be able to hear your co-pilot but um, I, I hear the different things and if RV life, you know, if it gets off and says, oh, you're, you know, it's here or you're going to do this, I can glance over at the map and go, oh, it's confused here. So I can just ignore that piece of it, but I can see exactly what's going on. I can hear what's going on and I can move along. So two very good apps to actually help you as you actually um, initiate your trip that you planned. Well, that's about it. Uh, that gives you a pretty good idea how we do things. Again, that's just how we do it, so uh, everyone's a little different, so if you've got certain things that you like better than others, make a comment. You know, we're glad to uh, open up a dialogue and talk back and forth, and you may have something that is a really, that's really cool and would be very helpful to us, and I'm sure to others also. So, anyway, until uh, next time, be safe, and we hope to see you out on the road.